All right. Thank you guys so much for joining. Hello. Who was the first? Who was the first one here today? Let me take a look and see. Cameron, were you the first one here? Oh my gosh, guys! Thank you so much for joining, everybody. I appreciate you. I appreciate you being here. All the gifts, all the comments, all the hearts. Guys, are you ready? Are you ready for New Year's? By the way, because we might be talking a little bit about New Year's resolutions today. Alexa, stop. Guys, if you're if you're new to my stream, this is In It Together with Gabby and Sammy. This is a show we do every Tuesday night and then 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We talk about coping with emotional, social, and psychological well-being to promote self-healing. We dig into a new topic each week so that you guys can um, use some of the resources we give you to apply to your everyday life. So before we get started here, as usual, we always have a wonderful intro made by Emoji J, but we're doing it. We're doing it our way this time. No box. The quality is so much better. your guard down I'm not gonna let you fall Hold on to me now I'm not invincible Drowning in self-doubt Can you pull my demons out? As always, thank you so much to Emoji J. He makes intros for so many of the shows, and he does an amazing job. He also records a lot of the shows on Meet Me. So if you guys, I don't know if he's here yet. I think he is. He's going to put his YouTube channel down here. Subscribe to him, and you can view any of the shows you may have missed. Guys, welcome to In It Together with Sammy and Gabby. Um, I'm really excited for this week's episode, guys, because... 2021 is coming very quickly. Thank God. <laughs> so if you guys missed last week, we talked about mindfulness with Tyler. He was a spiritual practitioner and a really good friend of mine. And we talked a little bit of, about how you achieve mindfulness and why it is so important. Today, before we get into this week's topic, I would like to ask you guys, if you can, get a piece of paper and a pencil. This is definitely going to be that type of a show today, y'all. So before we get into the topic itself, I always ask you guys an open-ended question and a poll question on my Instagram. Someone will probably put it in the comments. If they don't, hit that, um, hit my bio up here. It's in it together, underscore me, me. It gives us a really good opportunity to give you guys some really personal, personalized content because you guys are viewing and your answers are up here, anonymously, of course. So let's get into it. We, I asked you guys, and by the way, the text might be kind of hard to read this week and I'm taking note of that, <laughs> so I'll be reading everything to you. But do you guys follow through with New Year's resolutions? I was surprised by this answer. 50 cents, 57 percent of people said no. 43 percent said yes. I honestly expected more people to say no. So with that being said, I'm going to ask you guys, let's be a little vulnerable. If you guys are the type that might not follow through through resolutions every year, type a one. And if you do always follow through, hit a two. One is you do not follow your resolutions. And two is I always complete my goals. So I'm seeing, <laughs> seeing some threes out there. Yeah, so I see quite a bit of ones. I see a couple of twos. So I was, I was a little surprised, to be honest with you. I was expecting a bigger number. But me and Sammy will talk about this in a moment. The next question was, what's your New Year's resolution? Here's some of the answers you guys gave me. To grow as an individual take care of my family, and make sure I can do what's best for them. To save more money, absolutely, absolutely. That's, that's always a, go a good goal to have. 
to be more body positive toward myself. Oh yeah, I guess I'm covering it. <laughs> my resolution is to better myself any way I possibly can. To be honest, I gave up on those. I'd rather pick a quarterly goal and chase that. And I, I don't completely disagree with that actually, uh, to lose weight. Finding where I fit in the puzzle. To get my life to a better place than I am today, mentally, physically, and emotionally. And to eat healthier. So those are some of the New Year's resolutions you guys gave me on Instagram. If anyone wants to drop their New Year resolution in the comments, you can do that now. We're going to have Sammy join the box, and we're going to talk a little bit about all of the responses you guys gave us. Hi. Hello. Well, I'm pretty good. How are you? I am well. I'm well. Awesome. <laughs> so we saw, um, you know, let me just, I'm just curious. Let me just go back to it. We have that here. 57% of people said that they don't follow the resolutions. How do you feel about that number? Are you surprised? So, I'm a little, I'm, a, I'm skeptical of that number. Um, more so of the 43% saying yes. Um, and I think we'll, we'll get into it more kind of as we're going, but I kind of feel like the goals that we were seeing were really um, great ideas, great places to start. But I think you guys are going to see as we're going, um, they're a little vague, so you could interpret it however you want to interpret it. Um, so maybe that's why we're seeing so many yeses is because people are like, well, generally I meant that. Um, so we're going to kind of go over how to make more specific, we're calling them smart goals. Um, and that will let you know for sure, did I hit that place that I wanted to hit or am I a little shy still? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, we'll be going into smart goals here in a moment. It's, it's just a really good resource that you guys can use and really all of us can use mm -hmm. to help us achieve our goals and make sure that we're actually achieving them and keeping track of them. So um, if you guys want to hear some interesting facts about I got statistics goals, for you guys. <laughs> Got the numbers. He loves numbers. I love numbers. <laughs> I love numbers. They tell us so much. So hopefully we won't put anybody to sleep. Hopefully you guys will find this as fascinating as me, but I, I won't keep you on the numbers too long, guys. So stick with us. Stay with us. Um, so there was a website called Goal Band that had some interesting statistics. Um, and the website's whole goal is to have people make goals and, and get towards them. Um, so they had some stats on there. They had a Harvard study that suggested that 83% of the U.S. population does not have goals for themselves. They're just kind of wandering, wandering around aimlessly, you know, just doing whatever sounds good. No real goals in mind. 83%. Wow. That would stress me out. Yes. Yes. 83. Yep. Um, me too, Poppy Stark. <laughs> yes, that's a good one. Um, and then they said that 92% of New Year's resolutions fail by January 15th. So two weeks in, people are like, me, I'm not sure how I feel about this goal anymore. I'm out. I'm done. I'm done with this one. Yikes. Yikes. Um, and again, I think that goes back to their goals are too vague or too large so we had somebody in the comments say you know quarterly goals or the instagram yeah. um say quarterly goals and yes that is very helpful to chunk the large goals we have into small goals small achievable goals but we're gonna get into that um we also found that 50 percent are more likely to achieve goals are if they are written so writing our goals is super duper important um and that is because uh, we have 1,500 thoughts per minute. So the average human has 1,500 thoughts per minute. Um, and only three out of every hundred adults actually write down their goals. So we have all these, yeah, we have all these thoughts going on, all this stuff going on in our head, all this stimulus we're taking in and all kinds of stuff. And if we're not writing it down, it's just getting lost up there. And only three out of every hundred of you, we have 106 people in here. So only three of y'all are writing down your goals. Who writes your goals? Hit a one. Do you write your goals down? I'm one. I hit, I write my goals down or I will go crazy. <laughs> yeah. Gotta, gotta, gotta remember what the goal is. Yes. Yes. Um, 
Research also found that sharing goals with someone who will hold you accountable also increases your chance of success. So not only write it down, but say to your mom, your sister, your best friend, um, your church group, hey guys, I'm gonna do this thing and I need y'all to like keep me in check about it. So when I call you and I'm like, man, I don't really wanna cook tonight. You guys can be like, remember that goal? Mm -hmm. You can do it with your meet me fans, you know, Uh anybody. Use your resources. Yes, yes. Um, And then also goals should be time bound, specific and measurable. They also found that all that helps, but we're not gonna get into that right now because that has a lot to do with what SMART goals are. So those are my fun facts for you guys today. All right, so with that being said, we all, I I know even if you don't write them down, we all have goals you wanna reach. Maybe we're not trying to reach some of those goals because we're afraid. You know, change is really scary and there's actually stages of change, which I didn't actually know until Sammy taught me. Yes. <laughs> I teach you guys the stages of change as well. Yeah. So we decided it would be a good idea for you guys to evaluate how ready for change you are before we say, hey, let's go make a change. So let's, we got to, we got to figure out, like, are you ready for change? Um, so there are five. Some would argue six stages of change. Five, definitely, possibly six. So I'm going to walk you through those really, really quickly, guys. Um, So the first stage of change is pre-contemplation. These are folks that are in denial. Um, Denial River, who's who's going down the denial river? Um, So either that or they've tried it in the past and they failed. Um, and they're like, man, I tried it. it. Clearly it didn't work, so I don't really need to change it. You know, still with that denial, but maybe they had made an attempt at one point. Um, so those are our pre-contemplation folks. Then at some point something comes along and makes you say, hmm, okay, maybe this is a problem. They got me, I see it, I see where that's happening. These are our contemplation folks, they are, ambivalent. We like in therapy to use the word ambivalence. Um, So these are folks that say, okay, I see where it's hurting me, but look, it's also helping me too. Look, look what it's doing over here. Um, So they're still kind of hanging on to that unwanted behavior um, because it does have some potential, they, in their perspective, helpful pieces of it. Then another point happens as we're kind of going through this process where we say, okay, I get it. It's not really helping me. It's mostly just hurting me. It's time. I'm ready. So we move into preparation. Now, folks in preparation are still having the unwanted behavior, but they're doing small things to change. So like, you know, maybe they're meal prepping or they're buying resources that they need to make the change. They're they're starting to talk to people and tell them about this change they want to make. They're maybe setting a date of when they're going to start making this change, all that kind of stuff. Then the date comes and it's time and we move into action. So our folks in action are actively avoiding triggers. They're reaching out for help and they're taking steps to avoid temptation. They're doing it. They are getting rid of this unwanted behavior um, and mostly being successful. Um, I'll come back to that mostly point in a minute because that comes into the the last questionable um, stage. So then after a while, we feel really confident we've made this change. It's really not that hard to do it anymore. There might be still some um, challenges that pop up from time to time, but mostly we're successful with this change. So these are our folks that are in maintenance. Um, The last stage that we have that is questionable It's questionable because because it's called relapse. So relapse is a stage of change, but it doesn't have to be. You don't have to relapse, um, but oftentimes folks do. And that relapse can can occur during any one of those stages we talked about. Um, Typically it's during the action stage, um, but it can happen in any of them. I could be preparing to do it and then say, just kidding, it's not a problem anymore. And go right back to pre-contemplation. So yes, it doesn't have to be a stage, but oftentimes it is. So those are our stages of change. 
If you guys are just joining, this is In It Together with Gabby and Sammy. I'm Gabby. This is Sammy. She is a licensed mental health counselor, and we do this show every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Right now, we're talking about SMART goals because New Year's is right around the corner. It's going to be 2021 on Friday. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for 2021? I am so ready for 2021. Oh, let's go. <laughs> So I'm going to give you guys just a little recap of what we've been talking about so far. So if you guys are here and you're interested in what we're talking about, you probably are trying to set some goals for yourself. And there is stages of change that come with accomplishing goals because, you know, it, it is scary. I mean, I've been there. It's, it's, it's scary because you're, you're so used to the norm that you're, that you're already in right now. You know, it's like a habit. You have to break the habits. So just to quickly go through the five, arguably six stages of change. And so there's pre-contemplation, which is where you don't even think there is a problem. You don't find a need to create any kind of goal. Then you go into contemplation, which is where you're like, okay, maybe I have a problem, but I still feel like this benefits me in some way. I think of like smoking cigarettes when I think of this yes. type of, type of uh, situation. Then you might go into preparation. This is where you're like, okay, I'm, I'm starting to make some changes. I'm going to make some changes, but I'm still going to, you know, those triggers are still going to be there. But then you're going to go into action. Action is when you're like, yep, I'm avoiding my triggers. I'm taking the steps I need. I'm talking to my friends about it. And there is, and there is still the temptation there, but now you're like, you know, you're really getting in there. Then you're going to go to maintenance. Maintenance is where the change is pretty, pretty easy for you at this point. Um, you know, there's still triggers there, but now it's pretty much normal. And then of course there is the chance of relapse and any of those stages. Um, and it doesn't have to be a stage, but you know, if you do fall into that stage, don't give up, man, pick back up where you started. We're only human. You know yeah. what I mean? So don't, don't and that, crazy, that's a great point, Gabby, that, just because we fail doesn't mean we have to continue <laughs> to fail, right? Like we can keep trying again. It's okay. Everybody fails at something at some point in their life. Keep trying. Absolutely. All right. So now that we know what to expect when we're trying to achieve the goal, now we're going to talk about SMART goals. And um, I, tried to, I tried to put this sheet on there for you, but I had to type it all out. So SMART's an acronym, okay, S-M-A-R-T, Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Timely. Uh, Sammy, what, what are those, what does that mean? That, that sounds really confusing to somebody who wouldn't have any idea about what we're talking about. <laughs> yes, yes. So I'm going to walk you through the meaning of each of those words, and then Gabby and I are going to do a worksheet together that will help you get like a more solid, concrete idea of how do you really put this into play when you're making a goal. Um, so SMART's like you said, specific, measurable, attain, achievable, relevant, and timely. Um, so specific is you want to be exact about what you want to accomplish. So remember I said people were being kind of vague, you know, what is healthier? What is um, more or less? Like be, be extremely precise about what it is that you want to do. Um, because if I say healthier, well, you know, I could eat cereal instead of Pop-Tarts, and that's probably healthier, but is it really healthy? I don't know. I don't know if that's the goal we were looking for. Um, so be very, very specific about what you want to achieve. Um, then there's measurable. So uh, measurable is how you know you've accomplished something. So this kind of goes hand in hand with being specific. Um, so if I say I want to exercise more, more is really vague, right? So if I say I want to run on a treadmill for 15 minutes, three days a week, I know I can count 15 minutes, I can count how many days of the week, and I can know if I did that or not. Um, so again, that helps us to know if we're, we're achieving our goals or not. Um, because if I just say I want to exercise more, well, if I go from here to the front door, I, that's exercise, right? I moved my body. Is that really achieving the goal that I wanted to achieve though? Yeah, I don't know. Um, then we have A is achievable. So this is how you check your realisticness of your goal. Um, and a big part of this is resources, right? So if I say my goal is to visit every country in the world, 
is that really realistic? Do I really have the money to buy airplane tickets to all these places and hotels? And yeah, it's not really realistic. It would be a super awesome goal, right? But realistic, you'd probably give up before it happened. Um, so yeah, maybe it would be safe. Again, we talked about like chunking goals, right? Smaller goals. So maybe I want to start with, you know, I'm already on the East Coast. I've already visited some places on the East Coast. So maybe my first goal is I want to visit every, you know, state on the East Coast. And then I can kind of work my goals from there. Um, so yeah, realisticness. Um, so, the, oh, that was achievable, sorry. Um, and then there's relevant. Relevant is the purpose it serves. So if I'm setting a goal because I want to be happier, I, for one, would not set a travel goal because traveling does not make me happy. It does once I get there, I guess, but the whole idea of traveling stresses me out. So that probably wouldn't be a good goal for me. So what is the reason you want to set the goal? What purpose does it serve? Let's make sure we're reaching that purpose. Um, and then the last one is timely. So the amount of time it will take, and we kind of already hit on this one, um, is just, you know, making sure you can get it done in an amount of time that you won't give up before it happens. So let's keep them timely. Definitely. All right, so we just smelled, we just spelled smart. We just smelled spark. You smelled it? <laughs> so yeah, guys, so this that's pretty much smart goals in a nutshell. Uh, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So I have a worksheet that is actually a really good resource for all of us that we could use. And I'm going to post it on my Instagram as well. So if you guys ever want to look back on it or you know, print it, I guess. I don't know how you print from Instagram, but if you know, if you can, um, it's a really good resource. So hopefully tell me if you guys can see this. You can I might even put the, um, the link to the website with the worksheet. Oh, okay. You guys should be able to see this, right? I, I had to move it because of the box. Um, Ooh, I can see on. it except for your head. It's above my head still? It's above my head? Yes. Okay. Now, that's if you stay like that. Yeah, just as long as you guys can like, you know, read it. Okay, so you, this is my New Year's resolution before we talked about SMART goals. My New Year's resolution was to eat healthier. Is that very specific? <laughs> no, yeah. it's not very specific. So to give you a little backstory, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm vulnerable on my stream. If you guys come here every day, you know that I am pretty much an open book. But I had a past where I've had a past with the eating disorder and, you know, to this day, I still struggle sometimes with, you know, my body image and stuff. So some days I'll just not eat. And it's not like I'm actively trying to do that. It's just that some days I'll feel like I have no appetite. It, it's, a, it's, it's something I struggle with on, like, on a daily basis. So, um, you know, so that's my goal for this year. It's actually always my goal, but I'm not going to lie. <laughs> the past couple months have been a little rough for me. So we're going to use the New Year resolution as an opportunity to hit that goal. So specific smart specific what exactly is it that i want to accomplish yes so what again what is it that exactly that you want to accomplish what is healthy let's define what healthier is so for me i'm trying to eat uh three meals a day that are balanced with each food group okay so that's every food group three times a day mm -hmm measurable and i'm sorry if you guys can't see this i'll take note of this next time but i do have the worksheet here <laughs> measurable how will it, will you know that you've reached the goal yes yeah this is a little um this one i found a little confusing to like grasp you know as, as someone who's not a counselor but that you're supposed to um pretty much achieve like you're you know you're actually doing it you know what i mean so i'm actually feeding a fruit a vegetable a carb etc three times a day. That's the measurable. I'm measuring the, you know, each group three times a day. So that's measurable. And remember too, we talked about chunking goals, right? So like Gabby and I had talked about this, that she wasn't even, how often would you say you were actually hitting this goal? Well, I mean, honestly, it's, this is, and this is why I'm really glad we're talking about this today. I've had a really rough year, especially because I have some medical issues going on. Mm -hmm. So I would probably be cool for like two or three weeks. And then I would just fall off just for like me. several weeks and right. then I get back on. So, so we, we said, you know, it's better for you to start with three days as opposed to a full week because it helps get you on track first. Then once you feel really comfortable with that three days, then you challenge yourself and you go the next step further. But 
yeah, not making those goals too large, guys. Right. So, you know, the fact that I have done that where I've kind of like over, you know, because I, you know, I went from something I've never done to suddenly right. doing it seven days a week and it like, and it, it's overwhelming, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So it is good to start, like you might have the goal of eating three days, you know, three um, balanced meals every day of the week. But if you make it a smaller goal, you're more likely to achieve the whole big picture that you're going for. Absolutely. So that was a really good conversation we had. Um, this is achievable. Is achieving the goal realistic with effort and commitment? Have you got the resources and how will you get them if you don't have them? So this is kind of like, do you have the, do you have the money to spend on groceries? Do you have the ability to research uh, sales to save money? Do you have the storage? Do you have the, um, the ability to, you know, the transportation or the ability to use the delivery service? Um, so yeah, those, you know what I mean? So you have to kind of, you know, you really have you what stage like, of change are you in for that first part of the question, right? Is this goal realistic with effort and commitment? Are you really ready to commit to this? Definitely. All right, then we're getting into, oh yeah, that was, that's exactly what I put on my goal. And everything I'm showing you, I put on my sheet. So yeah, money for food, sales, storage, etc. Relevant, R, S-M-A-R, relevant. So why is the goal significant to your life? So for me, I, um, you know, I don't eat enough and it's it, enough of each food group, which affects my health physically and mentally. Okay. And I notice when I eat better, that I feel better. I perform, you know, better in life. And so that's why it's relevant to me, this goal. And, you know, we might have the same goal, but have a different reason why we're doing it too, right. by the way. So this is very specific to me. Then timely. When will you achieve the goal? So we talked about kind of make, like putting it in the chunks. So three days a week is like our first goal. We're gonna have three balanced meals, three days a week. And you know, we'll do that for four weeks, one month. So once you've done that successfully for those four weeks, guess what? Time to reevaluate your SMART goals because then you can, you know, start, you know, you're, you're, you're moving up, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, this is a tool you guys should be using like frequently, not just like one and done. <laughs> potential obstacles so again if you're just joining this is in it together with gabby and sammy we're talking about smart goals and my news resolution is to eat healthier specifically three balanced meals a day for three weeks so we don't get too overwhelmed potential obstacles so maybe you live with somebody who isn't interested in changing their diet and there's snacks around there's temptation maybe you work a lot um you don't have, you're too tired or, you know, you're just not feeling it. You know what I mean? You know, cooking's a long, it takes a lot, a lot out of your day to go grocery shopping, to meal prep, you know, to put everything in containers. And it really does take a lot of time out of your day. So, um, let's see what else Actually, I just want to say real quick too, you guys can do the smart part of this and probably be relatively, relatively successful, but I like these last extra couple steps that are on this worksheet because it helps you to think ahead and really think through everything and not just stick with those um, five things. Um, yeah. So you don't necessarily have to do this part, but I think it's gonna make you more successful if you do think through some of these things. Definitely. And you know, of course you have all these obstacles, but there's always potential solutions as well. So to everything I just said, you know, the temptation of snacks in your house with other people, separate your food. Um, schedule when you're gonna go to the grocery store. Um, make a menu, write down, like, you know, write down your, um, all of your um, recipes, you know, it, it, it'll, to be organized is like really huge, at least for me. Um, I know people who don't even write a grocery list to go to the grocery store and that drives <laughs> me insane. So then the last part is who are you going to ask for help? And yes, you can ask for help. You're not alone with good goals. You're not alone in general, guys. Use your resources. So for yeah, me, the stats told us, right? Absolutely. The people that ask for help are more successful, along with writing it down. Exactly. So for me, that's like, you know, maybe it's your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your best friend. I actually took uh, the, the opportunity to get a dietitian because I felt like I needed that step. So don't be afraid to look into professional, um, you know, resources as well. Absolutely. Then what steps need to be taken to get to your goal? So that kind of goes back to your resources. So this is like buying your storage containers, listing your recipes, making a menu, meal prepping, 
And you know, you want to have a date to completion for those steps. And Which a lot of good dates, right? So we know we're working towards something and we're not just saying, oh, whenever I get around to it, like let's pick a date when we want to be achieved. Absolutely. So with that being said, guys, that's smart goals in a nutshell. Uh, for this, morning, this is in it together with Gabby and Sammy. I'm Gabby. This is Sammy. We just talked about what smart goals are. And um, now we have a couple of guests we're going to have in the box, guys. So Sammy, if you can exit yes. yourself. I am going to pop out for a little bit, guys. These might be some familiar faces to you guys. Um, Charisma. She has a show on the app right after mine, actually, at 10 p.m. Eastern time, called One Day at a Time. If you could request that box, I want to talk to you. <laughs> Who's still rocking with me, by the way? Hit a one. Hit a one. Who's still here? Yes. The, street, this, the views on the stream tonight are really incredible. Thank you guys so much for being here. Hi. I'm great. How are you doing, girl? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Seriously. You're like, you're like one of the first besides Ash, <laughs> like one of the first like top badges I've had. So this is really cool. That's amazing. Thank you so much. So Charisma, for people who don't know you, um, I, want, I hope I'm getting this right. Are you a, you're a mindset and success coach. Is that right? That's right. So what we talked about is a lot of, a lot of what you do for, for your career, you help people achieve goals, right? Absolutely. I love that. It's my purpose, my passion. I love that too, girl. So, um, so I, I guess this might be a broad question, but how do you, how do you do that? Like, what's it, what is a day? What does one day look like for you? One day at a time when you're trying to help people with their goals. There's a lot of different things that I'm doing, but specifically my passion is to help people just like you and everyone here on their stream on this stream and help them overcome their limiting beliefs to be aware of the barriers that are holding them back in their lives and break through those to achieve radiating confidence and take action in their lives to really have those goals and let them shine and follow through with them, make them reality. Wow. That's, that's very inspiring. That's really, really inspiring. Wow. So um, you must have succeeded in a lot of things to get to where you are to be helping other people succeed. So if you could give me an example of something in your life that you like a goal you've had and how you've achieved it. Absolutely. So I'm still fairly young. I'm 22, but I've experienced a lot through my age and I wouldn't have been able to do the things I've done if I didn't put my mind to it and take action. Really like writing it down. I really encourage that and going after it, which means consistently. And that's why I go with the motto one day at a time. And a good example of something that I've done is I opened up a restaurant at the age of 21 years old and I just put in obviously my mind into this and took action. So I had a passion behind my love for boba tea, which is a drink, and I wanted to create an environment in my hometown that welcomed everyone and allowed them to network and share their talents on stage and hang out. So I had this little shop created and built around for the needs that I wanted to fulfill for my own hometown. And just a year and a half ago, June of 2019, I opened up my own restaurant and it went in the top 15 restaurants of Sarasota and it's still open to this day. Thank God through all the pandemic and COVID and such, I'm just so beyond grateful that it's open. Wow. Wow. <laughs> You're such an inspiring person. That's really incredible. Um, so and at any point in that journey, was there ever a time where you felt like giving up or maybe there was a hiccup during the, the journey that may have, you know, Gabby all the time, literally <laughs> all the time. There's so many challenges and obstacles, moments of self doubt and other people's opinions and just worries coming at me. It felt very overwhelming. And that goes for all the challenges I've encountered and all the goals I wanted to achieve in my life. There are obstacles, but that shows that there is strength being built and there's a lot of opportunity behind it and as long as there's a passion behind your goals in your life you can keep proceeding through with them and that's what i keep reminding myself when things go wrong within the first week we got broken into there was a lot going on within the first 10 months the pandemic hit i had to close my restaurant for over a month there's been a lot of those stepping stones that i want to call like they're breaking me but in
really focus on and what we're in control of is in right now, the moment. So that's beautiful. So do you have a, do you have a new year resolution for 2021? As for me, I don't do resolutions. I don't think it's the best to like set something just for a new year. Like, Oh, I have to wait till January 1st to get going. And a resolution to me feels like it has to be, it's like kind of like a habit. You got to start something now. Like why am I starting something? So I go over my goals and my agenda. I do audits through my calendar weekly and look at things I need to be working on, improving, maybe removing from my life. And I more so do daily goals to weekly goals and monthly goals. And then of course each year I set goals. Like I have goals for myself for the overall year of 2021, but I kind of just call them goals rather than resolutions. And for me, my biggest goal would be to have my own conference at my restaurant because we have a stage there and we can fit almost a hundred people. So just being able to put on my own event there with other speakers feeling welcome to share their story. That's really, really cool. And you know, and I do agree with you. I mean, we, we talked about New Year's resolutions on the show and I have actually never had a New Year's resolution to be honest with you. Cause mm -hmm. I usually I'm working on things that I'm, you know, I'm thinking more long-term, right. You know, for the sake of the show, I did make a New Year's resolution. Yeah. Um, yeah, but for any, for any of us who might be um, struggling to, you know, keep going, do you have any advice? Definitely. There's moments like that for all of us, so don't feel alone. That's the first thing. Like, this is completely normal. You're human. It's valid to feel feelings. But I really encourage you to take the time to think, reflect, journal, and just realize and recognize what it is that's making you feel those feelings and give validation towards them and then kind of put them in a brighter light where you can find ways to improve and overcome, surround yourself with better people, talk to someone about it, but definitely don't hold it in, like let it out, whether that's journaling or talking or taking the time to reflect. Super important. And I, I don't know if you guys see the trend here, but writing things down is so important. And apparently only three out of a hundred of you guys actually write your goals down. So, let's so make, important. it really is so important. That would drive me crazy. Yeah. So, so, you know, you're, you are such an inspiring person and that's one of the reasons why you have your own restaurant and your own show on Meet Me. Would you like to tell everybody a little bit about that? Absolutely. I joined this app in March after my experience at Playlist Live for my YouTube channel. And it's been an absolute blessing. Right when I got on this Meet Me app, the whole platform, I was like, I want my own show. It's been on my vision board. Like I totally manifested it. I obviously put in my own action towards it. And I had my own shows prior to it being official, but it is absolutely amazing to be able to have my own show. It's on Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern time, and it's on a new topic of personal development each week. It's called One Day at a Time with Charisma. That's me. And we just speak on different topics, whether it's about breaking habits or avoiding projection and going through childhood trauma, going over goals and topics like this. We'll be starting my show in about 20 minutes right after Gabby's. And yeah, you guys are more than welcome to join. <laughs> also, I'm going to be a guest on her show right after this one. So make sure you guys go on over to Charisma Stream. It's going to be the very first one trending, which is super cool. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add, Charisma? I want to thank you so much for this amazing opportunity. I'm so excited for you to have your own show. Like that's that's happening ASAP. And everyone, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you. I'm just reminding you all, you're wildly capable. Go into this year with big eyes, big hearts. There's a lot out there. And I encourage you to come to my stream afterwards to see Gabby and me as well and speak about reviewing the last year and going into the new year ready. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show, Charisma. We have one more guest tonight, guys. We don't usually do two guests, but we are today. Thank you, you so know? much. Yes, all right. I feel like I'll end my stream. I do that sometimes. <laughs> Guys, we have one more guest. He is a top badge on this app. He is such an inspiration and he's so kind. And his name is Donnie. Hello. Welcome to the box. Welcome. Hi. Hi everyone. How are you doing? We do. Oh my god. Together. together. I love that <laughs> so much. <laughs> I love that. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Oh, Donnie. So Hi guys. 
<laughs> so Donnie, we're talking about uh, goals today. Um, could you tell me about a goal you've had in your life that you've achieved and how you have achieved it? Uh, we talked about it uh, the other day, but um, for those who don't know me, I'm Donnie. It's pronounced Donnie because I'm originally from South Africa, even though it's spelled Danny. Um, yeah, thank you for the opportunity, first of all. You guys have an amazing show, and, and you guys are very blessed uh, together with you and Sammy. Awesome job. Thank you for being here. Seriously. You're I was welcome. so excited when you both agreed to be on today. It's an honor. It's an honor. Um, quickly, just just quickly, um, talking about goals. For those who don't know me, um, I had a few setbacks in my life um, and opportunity for goals that I've set for myself in order to achieve them made me who I am today. One of them was I was paralyzed at the age of three for three and a half years uh, because of an illness that I was born with. Um, my dad had the, had the opportunity to decide whether we're going to go for surgery or not, and we decided not to. And uh, through prayers and, and determination and positive vibes, I've managed to be able to walk again uh, shortly after four years uh, by putting, just having those goals to get strong, to, to be able to to walk again was a, was, was a major goal. It wasn't really easy. It took about six and a half to eight months just to start walking again. Shortly after my paralyzation, I was still busy trying to, to walk, uh, do all the exercises that I needed to do. I got molested for about two and a half years. Um, mentally, mentally, that broke me down. And... For those who, who's been in that boat, it's not easy. Um, eventually got out of it, um, went over to school, got bullied, just like everybody else, got bullied, got name calls, got every day just, just seemed like I had to get through it. There was goals that I set for myself and said, but I'm better than this. Somehow, some way, Everybody is talking about getting, see the light at the end of the tunnel. Well, <laughs> that light took a long time before I saw that light, but I had it because I had some goals set for myself. I decided that I was better than me. Um, after I came to America in, uh, in 2008, just prior to that, I was homeless for about six, six to eight months. And as I told Gabby, um, you guys will not believe it, but this dolphin was sleeping in a, in a tree, just a perfect branch where I could lay down and put my head down and sleep every night. Out of the danger, out of dogs attacking you, just sleeping on the tree for every night for about six to seven months. And I went and watched some cars during the day in order to make money just to be able to eat. And when I walk in the store and I go and buy a piece of bread and something to drink, even if it was just water, I came outside. Now, South Africa is very common for, for young children being homeless, uh, especially native uh, children is, is well known for being homeless and not having somewhere to eat or whatever. Now, imagine this. I come out the store. What's the first thing I see as a kid? Standing there and then they're doing this, like clapping their hands together and rub their belly like this. I haven't eaten, I haven't eaten for days. Here's this kid standing in front of me. What did I do? I gave him the food. And I went and slept. I've always, always put myself before other people, but it's made me a stronger person. Every day that I went through all that stuff made me a stronger person. And I said to myself, even though it was not what well, we just talked about, short-term goals, it was not a short-term goal. It was a long-time goal because I didn't know how long will it take for me to get out of it. Even though I woke up every morning just saying thank you that I'm breathing, and carry on, and hopefully that day will bring something more blissful. 
came to America. I started working here. And then I became on the app um, due to the fact that I didn't have any friends and I was looking for some, some social activity. Uh, I have, I'm also, I'm also um, social, when it comes to going into social, like in the public to a gathering, I'm very anxious. I get claustrophobic. Uh, it feels like people look at you like you, you're, a, you're a tramp or you're, a, you know, you're just not part of this community, so we're not going to interact with you. So I felt left out. I came on the app, and uh, I'm going to share something with you guys. I didn't know why I came on the app. To me, it was just being friends. I liked it when I was on the app, visited a few streams. I got asked to go live. I went live. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know anything. So I'm still learning. Three months into streaming, somebody popped in my box with a gun against his head. And he told me, he says, Donnie, don't worry, I'm not going to pull the trigger. I just want to tell you that I've been visiting your stream for over a week. And every time I, I'm coming into your stream, before that, I wanted to pull the trigger. But because of your positive vibes and the way the, the information that you share, the, the laughter that you have every day, made me not pull that trigger for over a week. And he put the gun down. That guy, by the way, is still alive, and we're still talking almost every day. Wow. That made me realize what an impact and influence I have on this platform. I don't see it as an app anymore. I see it as a platform. Because it's a platform where people, real people meet, real people make friends. You create that friendship. Then I set myself a goal. I'm going to see how many people I can be friends with, but I'm talking about real friends, not fake ones, because we also know there's fake people on this app, right? There's, there's drama queens, there's, there's stirrers, there's you name it. They, 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 yeah. I made it a goal to at least make one person smile every single time I go live a good goal i'm still maintaining that goal i can i can tell <laughs> i can tell for sure There's i'm still maintaining that goal and i see these people in these comments you are very inspiring i'll tell you what it's a good goal to have that's a long time goal but it's easy maintainable right because you don't have to do anything you just have to you just have to smile right I had some up and downs on the app where I've had some, some of the most amazing people stand behind me. Um, when my mom passed away last year, couldn't be there for her. I had to stay here. I couldn't make it home. Mm -hmm. My grandmother passed away this year, shortly before I had the opportunity of going to South Africa. My dad was in the hospital twice now, almost died both times. Thank God he did not, and I was able to see him and spend a whole month with him. When I came back, I was a lot more relaxed. I felt, I felt that I've answered some questions that I had. I got that answer when I went back home. But now here's the, here's the thing. Speaking of goals, the last couple of months, I've really grown into, I have this anticipation into help other people by like what you guys kind of do but more in the sense of you know daily activities um whether you had a bad day at work whether whether something went wrong for, for the day whether you know it's the small things because a lot of people forget about the smaller things and focus on the bigger things which is not always maintainable i i we had this conversation before where i said people are more uh, with all the respect said, they narrow-minded. So wh what do they do? They stay in that box. They're too scared to peek their head out and say, well, what's outside this box? You got to be able to put, be open-minded 
and and narrow those bigger goals to smaller ones that's easy maintainable yep. that you know you can achieve like what I'm doing on the app by making people smile every day that's an easy goal your goal that you have by eating more healthier you can maintain it it's an easy goal it's a short time goal you can maintain it mm -hmm. so guys goals are meant to to meet you can meet those goals yeah there's people like charisma just said she she doesn't set goals for her but she's got other goals throughout the year so that helps her on that in that instance definitely and you know something you said donnie you said you said something about um you know getting overwhelmed and like being narrow-minded it kind of made me think about how a lot of people see their goals as like a chore almost. yes very true so it's, it's you know these goals that you set for yourself are supposed to be they're like your friend you're, they're not your enemy it's a right. journey to reach the goals that you're setting for yourself it shouldn't right. be it shouldn't be something that you dread every day right for sure right and and those goals those goals change so uh, and that's a question i that i that i have for for sammy later on um but yeah you 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 set yourself a goal but you still got to be able to adapt Definitely. some way or somehow you still got to be able to adapt and that's what i've been doing throughout my life the experiences the stuff that i went through in order to 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 become what i am today uh not just on the app but in my in my personal life too um i had a lot of i had to do a lot of changes in order to 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 be able to do what i do today um i've never thought in a million years that coming on an app like this or a platform like this that i was going to be where i am today Honestly, I didn't think that, and it's been a blessing. It's been a very interesting um, ride, and, and it's been it's been amazing. The people that I've come across, uh, people that that show support, people with 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 real things uh, that comes to you, the the backing up that's got your back a hundred percent of the time, and you get to know them as you go along. For sure, Definitely. you know. It's not hard to have a goal, guys. It's not have, hard to have a goal. Like it says, it is together. It is in it together. It together. <laughs> That's why we do this show, <laughs> y'all, because you're not alone. We're all we're all going through our own journey. <coughs> we exactly. Have to back. So Donnie, uh, we're we're closing up here in a moment. Is there anything else you'd like to add, or do you have any questions for Sammy? I just had uh, for Sammy. I had a question. This is if you do have your goals, um, how would you? What would you do in order to adapt change? And secondly, how often would you would you review your goal? If you had a set goal that you've written down, a short time goal. I'm not talking long time. I'm talking short time. What? How often would you review that goal list that you've that you've set for yourself? And guys, final thought. Any goal is achievable if you put your mind to it. As long as you stay positive, focused, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Do, do not ever uh, be afraid to ask for help. There's a lot of people that would back you, even if it's just a listener. You know, the ears, the ears are bigger than the tongue. Just remember that. I love you, Gabby. Love you, Sammy. I love all of you guys. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it very much. You guys have a good night. Yeah, love you. Much love. I'll be in the comments. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show. Wow, you just are, oh, wow, you're so inspirational. <laughs> you guys are joining us right now. This is In It Together with Gabby and Sammy. We do the show every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, right now, we're closing up here. We just talked about goals, smart goals specifically. Um, Sammy, so Donnie asked you two, a two-in-one question. Yes. Two questions. Yes. So actually, before I address that, I just want to say, um, you know, Charisma, I think amazing to be so young and achieve such huge goals and to just keep going and keep saying, bring it on, next goal, next goal. Let's keep, let's keep getting better and better. That was phenomenal. Right. And Donnie, I am so glad to be able to call you a friend. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say I'm just me, but I'm going to say anyways, you're amazing. 
and we love you. Um, as for your questions, um, they were kind of um, very similar. So my thought would be, if we're using the tool that we gave you guys, that worksheet, you can be reviewing that daily and saying, okay, what obstacles came up yesterday that I didn't think about? Let me, let me think through those. Um, the more frequently you use it, the better. Um, there's no like right or wrong answer to that. The, the more frequently, the better. So if you can't review it every day, you can't review it every day. That's okay. If you can only review it once a week, that, you know, that's fine. Write it down in a place that makes sense. So like if you're not one to carry a worksheet around with you, which is probably most of us, you know, tape it up on your phone, um, take a picture of it, keep it in your phone. Like everybody has a phone glued to them. That's always my biggest thing is figure out a way to put it in your phone because then you'll do it. Um, there's probably apps too. I should have looked into that more, but there's an app for literally everything. So I'm sure if you guys searched apps for uh, goals, there'd be something in there. Um, but you can be really creative with this. It doesn't have to just be pen and paper worksheet right in front of you. Well, guys, if you have any questions for Sammy about um, many of the goals that you have, your New Year's resolutions, uh, let us know in the comments. This is uh, pretty much the close of the show. Hope you guys love that idea. Make it your lock screen so you see it every day. That's phenomenal. That's super creative. Just make sure if it's a sensitive goal, maybe we're not doing that in case somebody does see your phone. And if you guys do have any questions, it, it, we might not get, I don't usually offer this, but I have, we have an Instagram in it together underscore meet me. If you guys ever have a question and you, that maybe you don't want to ask because you don't want to feel vulnerable in my stream, you can always message us on Instagram. We both, we both have access to it. So we see all the content and all the messages. So Thank you guys so much for being here. If you don't have any questions, I just want to thank everybody. Poppy Stark, thank you for, for being here. Lexi Ann, thank you for being here. Chris Dude, Sean, keep the faith. Thank you to Donnie and Charisma for being guests tonight. You guys are so amazing. And if you guys are going to head over to Charisma Stream, that's where I'm going to be. She has a show in two minutes called One Day at a Time, and I'm actually her guest on the show. So if you guys want to come over to her stream and we're going to also be talking about, um, we're going to talk about the past year and, um, you know, and the goals that we have. So make sure you guys check out one day at a time with charisma. It'll be trending number one in two minutes. Yes. And I'm going to pop out. You're going to end with the tarot card. I'm going to end with the tarot card. Awesome. All right. Bye guys. Love you all. Stay in there if you want, girl. That's fine. <laughs> okay, so last last week we talked about mindfulness. This was the tarot card from last week. Um, what do I resist feeling right now? This week's tarot card. Am I consistently showing up? Some trade their dreams for comfort, yet comfort is the enemy of progress. Success requires showing up every single day, even when you don't feel like it, and even when it feels uncomfortable. It takes guts and an endless vision to stay consistent to your dream. Today's soul action, journal where you can be more consistent in your life in alignment with your soulful goals than show up. So guys, thank you so much for joining us. This is In It Together with Sammy and Gabby. We do the show every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We talk about coping with emotional, social, and psychological well-being to promote self-healing. And, you know, happy new years to you guys. Like I said, if you ever have any questions, you could always message us on Instagram. Tomorrow we'll have next week's question up. So make sure you guys tune in for that. What her name? You going now? <laughs> Sorry, I thought that was for me. Guys, thank you as always for joining us and have a happy new year.